and welcome back to the channel josh helm here texas best construction we're back in the studio talking about choosing a framing method for building a texas best barnuminium today's video we're going to kind of dial it back and talk about not only some of the methods and the style of framing that we do but also maybe talk a little bit about some of the early on uh, styles as well and help display maybe some myths uh, that might be out there so i hope you guys enjoy this video let's get it going So like I said, in today's video, we're discussing some framing styles, and we've discussed this pretty often on the channel, primarily because there are some things that differentiate uh, what maybe one builder might be doing to the next. And in the Barnuminium industry, uh, there is a lot of different ways that people are going about it. Also, because of those very different styles of building, it can create some variations in cost and it also creates some confusion as well across the industry. So I want to talk a little bit about this so that you guys can understand some of the differences and what they are. Primarily, if we were to look back, let's say a decade ago or maybe even longer, you're going to see a lot more people who would build like a metal building and maybe come back on the inside later after it's a completed structure and add some additional framing on the inside so that they can have some finished space. This is really some of the early, at least in Texas, early renditions of Barnuminium stuff that was happening around here. I saw a lot of this happening and my parents built a Barnuminium. They did go more of a hybrid approach, which we're going to talk about here today. But there's just so many examples of people that built barnuminiums early on for different sets of needs and circumstances. All that to say this, that many of the styles and the ways that people were building originally weren't necessarily meant for, let's say, conventional home building practices or weren't meant for some of the air qualities and some of the things that we're doing today now when it comes to the quality finishes that we're trying to accomplish and building a Barnuminium. So the focus has shifted a little bit. So we're going to kind of talk about uh, what we're doing today and why Texas Best may focus in on certain ways of building as well. So let's get right into it. So there are people who still build from like a metal building kit and primarily because there's really kind of a split in the industry. There's a metal building manufacturers that want to sell metal buildings wood framing lumber suppliers want to sell lumber and so there's not really a uh, large effort to where all of these systems can be put into place and they're splitting the load when it comes to organization meaning that if you go to a metal building manufacturer they're going to try to sell you a full-blown metal building they're going to put all the parts in for a metal building what that means is there might be some compromise in the way that you're handling, let's say, air quality, the way that you are going to flash around your windows and doors. These are some things that you really want to look out for. So I just wanted to start it off with that to say that there are many ways to construct what we call a Barnuminium. And so really, just so you understand why there's so many variations of cost, because it really has to be compared apples to apples. I guess first we should define what we think a Barnuminium is. So in quick format for me, it's pretty easy. This has become a term that is mostly more wishful than anything. People might call uh, an all wood structure a Barnuminium. People might call a all steel structure a Barnuminium. People might call an, a mixed wood and steel frame structure a Barnuminium. And then you will have certain people who have even used different names with different classifications, maybe calling it a shouse or a pole barn and a post frame home. You know, there's a lot of different types of names that people are trying to categorize, whatever it might be. I personally don't care what it's called. Uh, for me, it's more of a free span structure, ideally where your roof span is 
covering a lot more territory. That to me is more of a Barnuminium where your free span structure is all happening from the outer perimeters of the home or the overall structure. Getting that out of the way. Now, if we're to look to construct a Barnuminium, I think there's several questions to ask yourself. Although there are post frame methods with wood, uh, we're not going to go too far in depth today about wood frame construction because even though we have started offering some of that, there are great ways to build a Barnuminium out of wood. And you can do that board by board, or you could even use like the rapid frame method that we've done. And you guys might have seen us feature on our channel here in the past year for our Woodhouse project, which is a, a great panelized wood frame construction, has its advantages when it comes to accomplishing an air barrier and many other things. But I do want to dig into our steel frame practices and what we're doing there, because it is primarily the main way that we build a Barnuminium here in Texas. So starting off, I would talk probably more about our typical hybrid steel frame and what that includes. So a hybrid steel frame Barnuminium for us is all of those roof lines have columns that are made from steel, which are on like a 20 foot spacing approximately. Some vary and can go a little further or a little smaller, depending on if there's a window or a door or something in the way. And so we have these bays that are created. And then depending on the eave heights, we will take our wood frame and fill in those wall bays. Now on the roof structure, we have continued steel, typical steel frame construction where we're running like say eight inch purlins on four foot spacing. This enables us to have all of that free span covered, including all the way from one side of the Barnuminium to the other. Additionally, on our hybrid steel frame, typical framing option, we do in our shop areas, all steel frame construction there. And then the parts where it's all living construction for HVAC climate controlled areas, we shift back over to this mixed construction where we have those walls covered with the zip system. So that zip will actually encompass and wrap all the way around the living structure, leaving that outer framing, say for a shop or porch, all left in steel frame construction. Why are we doing that? The reason why we do that and the effort is there is because the part where you're going to live is primarily important to maintain air quality, air tightness. You're paying a lot of money to heat and cool these areas. You don't want that air escaping. You don't want water coming into your house. These are some of the key reasons why we construct it that way. It's a great way as well for you to do customizations for your, say, windows. If you have larger windows, you can do typical wood frame construction methods there. Of course, all the interior framing is continued in wood frame too. We have specialized ways that we will come underneath all of that metal roof structure and put sleeper studs and attach those underneath side if it's exposed in say a large living room area. So this is the typical setup for our hybrid steel frame. But now more recently in some of our past videos, you guys might have seen us do what I like to call an advanced hybrid steel frame, where we're going a step further. You know, of course, there's more steps involved, uh, but this is where we take that same approach for the living quarters and our shop space, but now we're going on the outside of those steel purlins with those sleeper studs on the walls as well as on our roof lines covering the roofs with the zip system, encompassing that in full. You say, well, what is the advantage of that? Well, the advantage is it creates one more thermal break for all of the steel to eliminate, finally, uh, eliminate any concern from conduction, condensation that could occur directly through the steel, where you, especially where you have extreme colder climates, this would be a great method to be able to use steel and to still continue that type of construction. Additionally, it allows us to have an air barrier all the way around. 
where we can com- we can completely enclose these whole living areas with the zip system. This has proven to us to give us some great advantages when it comes to air tightness. For those of you that are on that side of the world where you believe that that's important, uh, we do we do believe it's important because you have the most control over that environment on the inside, giving you a greater advantage to now use some better equipment on the inside to maintain maybe variable speed, HVAC units, ERV, uh, energy recovery, ventilators, where you could come in and now really do the most good on the interior of your home uh, to create that quality air. We're also in those advanced framing methods, usually going to a full home dehumidifier. These are some of the reasons why we like to go that way. We get a really good airtight ACH scores with our blower door test. So uh, one of our builds, we were around a 0.6, I think a 0.63 on our ACH for the black gold Barnuminium. And we're about to do another test coming up as well because that was just with the zip system. That's what we're able to do with all zip. So of course you can accomplish that on the all wood frame, but you can't use zip system on the outside of just your purlin walls unless you add the sleeper studs. Uh, The reason why is because the zip system cannot, technically it's not supposed to be screwed in, it's supposed to be nailed. So you have to run those sleepers so that you can nail that in, which is kind of a furring strip that you're doing on the outside of those purlin walls. That adds thickness to your walls. That's another reason I don't like to do it in the living quarters because now my window ledges and door openings, all that stuff has to be like 12 inches thick, you know, to have a window seal. And so we like to keep that back to a conventional frame style. These methods and the way that we go about building for the advanced hybrid steel frame or the hybrid, the standard hybrid steel frame ways that we build, I feel like both work really, really well. What is changing from one to the other? Well, we're getting zip system up on the roof uh, and potentially you could continue that same method, say, over your shop areas. That's where the advantage lies uh, when you're trying to accomplish some better energy efficiency. Additionally, on the roof, it would allow you to switch that type of roof up. If you let's say you wanted for some reason asphalt shingles or let's say you wanted to go to a standing seam roof. Uh, you can now easily do that. Let's say you were concerned about changing your roof out if there was hailstorm or damages, you could easily do that. So we have ways to go about it on the other side as well that uh, we re- we would recommend if there was something incurred for your standard hybrid steel frame. But uh, these these uh, these things are what kind of leads us from the framing methods and how we build. So. Hopefully that helps break this down a little bit for you guys so you understand a little bit more about our hybrid steel frame. Also, I hope you understand in conclusion, the reason why there's so many variations in cost is because there are some people who still today will just throw up a metal building and then maybe put put some Tyvek or something like that on the outside or some type of water resistant barrier and then just tape around their windows. Why can that be a problem? Because you can have some air passing through there. Wherever air can travel, moisture can travel as well. And we're using spray foam in in some of these areas for a lot of those type of uh, barnuminiums. Everybody likes to use spray foam. And because open cell is a little more affordable, a lot of these a lot of these other people are using open cell and moisture is traveling and and through those areas. So that is where the concern lies. Water can get trapped. Water can come in to your walls and it could sit there and you could have some potential big problems. So this is just some of it of why we build the way we do primarily because we're putting a lot of these structures out there. We don't want to be concerned about it. And we also want to do things that are going to be good for the industry 
for the long haul. So hopefully that breaks it down a little bit for you guys. If you have some questions, put them in the comments below. Uh, we got a lot more Barnum and M content coming you guys way. Thank you guys for following along. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do that now. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, all of the socials. We look forward to seeing you there. I'm Josh Helm wishing you all the best and thanks for watching Texas Best.